Welcome back to a new episode of Master in Programming. In today's episode, I'll be showing you how to do something that I personally wanted to do for a really long time on Wix and I never figured it out until now. So that thing is basically how to create graphs onto Wix. So as you can see, as soon as I click on load data, we get a really nice looking bar graph here and a line graph fully customizable. So everything here is customizable, the name, the numbers, the labels, um, the colors of the actual graphs, everything is and obviously this input so I'll show you how I got it right now so basically at the moment it is manually being inserted into the graph so it's not like I actually manually selected what goes in as you can see I'm passing that table array and I can change this so it can be something from a database it can be something from a table whatever it is and as soon as you load this page or you can have it as I have it set up here using a button this will automatically fill the graph. So without further ado, let's get started and see how we can actually do this for ourselves. Okay, so we're back to our website here where we're actually using this. And essentially the end result that we wanna do at, at some point on this website is so that we actually get this information from the graph, uh, sorry, to be passed onto the graph from this database over here. However, just for the process of this tutorial, I'll get it, I'll manually just pass it through our graphs. As you can see, 7, 9, 8, 10 is what's actually being presented here once we load it up. And just before I delete this and do it again in front of you, let's go ahead and preview it one more time. So if I click on load, you will see that it's 7, 9, 8, and 10. So what I'll do now, now that you know what we're actually trying to do is I'll click back to editor and I'll actually delete them completely. I'm not gonna delete the page, I'll just delete them and we will do again together from the start. So the first thing we need to do is for each graph add a HTML or embed a HTML, so what I, I frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the plus icon over here and I'm gonna scroll down to embed. I'm gonna go to embed a widget and I'll pass my widget over here. I want it to basically take that form and we'll go over the shapes in just a second. I'll copy it and I'll paste it again, just underneath. And there we go. This will be presenting our bar graph and this will be presenting our line graph. Now, what is the code that we're actually going to be putting inside of here? Well, before I actually write it here, what I wanna do is I wanna explain it and go over it really quickly. And you'll be able to find all the documentation on this URL over here for all the graphs, whether it's the chart types, as you can see, we've got a really nice selection of them, all the code. And I basically summarize this into code here, and I'll basically just take it and put it here so that it's just easier to read and understand. So basically this code is going to be used to create, as you can see over here, a bar graph. And over here, you can customize the width and the height of your actual uh, a, a graph itself so even if you go over here even if you go over here and you change the actual size of the iframe this will not change how the actual graph inside looks and that's why you need to change it over here where it says width and height now let's go over a little bit more just on line 15 here where it says labels you've got transport you've got stuff you've got energy and then you've got diet and this is the stuff that would appear in the graph at the bottom. So on the x-axis, this is what will appear. These are the labels that will appear. Let's keep going and you might be wondering, well, how do we organize what appears on the left side? And that actually unfortunately happens automatically based on the values that you're putting. For example, if you're putting 7, 9, 8, 10, if these are your points, then you'll actually find 7, 9, 8, 10 appearing. But if you put something like uh, 50, 100, 150, then you'll have your numbers as 50, 100, and so on. And I'll show you an example of that. We'll play around with it. Let's keep moving on. Over here, you actually get to choose the colors of the background, the color of the border, and the border width. So we can change this, and we will. We'll actually play around with it multiple times. Now, this over here is the actual title of your graph as well. And something very important is as you can see here, the data, these are the actual numbers and I left it empty. 
Now, the reason I left it empty is so that we can actually fill it up ourselves. And I'll show you exactly how we do that as well. But let's keep moving forward. And you can see here that this is where we actually receive the information. This is allows us to actually update the chart once we send a message to the iframe. Without further ado, let's actually get started. And what I'll do is I'll copy all of this and I'll go back to my iframe and I'll place the code over here and I'll click on update. Awesome. So as you can see, we've got the labels, transport, stuff, energy, diet, individual emissions, and this is just zero to one because right now it's empty. Let's, before we can do anything, we can actually come over here and we can also change it inside of here. So I'm going to change this to something like apples. I'll go over here and say something like oranges. Here, let's say dog and let's say cat. And I know they are completely unrelated. But once I update this, you can see that everything changes immediately. Let's go ahead and edit the code one more time. And I want it from individual emissions, let's change it to something else. So over here, instead of individual emissions, I'm going to say something like random stuff. And I'll click update, and you'll realize that this is now changed to random stuff. Now, what if you don't actually want to pass information to the graph and you're manually just happy to display them here? Well, you can do that. You can simply go to data. And I'll put something like 1 for apples, 3, actually let's do big numbers. So 50 for apples, 100 for oranges, 200 for dog, and 300 for cat. And I'll update this. And as you can see, the graph now begins with those values already set. And if I click on preview... I can even fully interact with it. So I can hover over them and it will tell me what each thing holds as well, which is very cool. And as you can see, the stuff changed as well. So now we've got the limit at 300, 250, 200, 150, and 100. So it, went, it automatically detected it, the trend and went up by 50s. Let's go back for a second. And I guess the big idea here is, well, how do we change this from a bar graph to anything else? Well, as you expected, it's also to do with the code. Now you can come over here and you can see the different kind of um, charts that we can use. For now, I'm just gonna go over bar chart and line chart. And if you basically got it, you can do it all. And if we just click on this, we can see, oh, sorry, if we click on the line chart, we can see that the only thing we need to do is simply copy line, go over here, and let's edit this to be line. And if I pass this and update, as you can see, now it changes from a bar graph into a line graph. All right, so this is cool. Now let's see how we can actually pass the information through it. So to do this, let's go back and change some things. First of all, I want this to be a bar graph. And I also want to remove all the values from here, like this. Update. Awesome. Over here, however, I'm actually gonna go and copy the code from here. And we're gonna go over here and we're also going to paste it over here. Except for that one, we can go ahead and change it from bar into line and update. And there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and actually remove everything I wrote here. And let's do this all the way from the beginning. So I've got a button here and basically what we want to do is click on the button then click on our editor over here. I'm going to click on click and I'm going to give this a name so I'm just going to click enter. Now what we want to do is we want to post a message to this HTML and this HTML and we can do that very easily actually. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to come and I'm going to type in a dollar sign and then a W a hashtag and I'm going to type in HTML1, I'll put, I put, I'll put a dot and then I'll say post message and inside of here I'm meant to pass the message that I want. So let's go ahead and create that message. I'm going to make it into an array so I'll say let and we can say call it table ARR for array, open and close a bracket and inside of here I'll put something like 20 
40, 60, and 80. And I'll go back inside of here and I'm going to type in table array. Awesome. Let's go ahead, before we just do it for this one, let's go ahead and confirm that this works. So I'm going to click on preview. We've got nothing. Let's load the data. Awesome. We've got 20, 40, 60, and 80. So it works. Now let's connect it to this one as well. All I'm going to do, be doing is go over here. And basically, I'm just going to actually copy that one. And I'll change this to HTML2. Let's go ahead and preview this. And if I click on load data, you can see that it fully works. Exactly how we would have expected a graph to work. And this one also, I believe, is interactable. No, it's not. This one is there. So basically, that's it for this tutorial. And you can honestly just fill this table with anything else. It doesn't have to be hard-coded stuff like we did here. It could be actual values from a database. It could be something that the user actually enters. It could be anything else. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this episode. And make sure you do check out the link for the documentation as well. Have a good day.